Should you consider working as a government contractor? Once you decided you want to work for the government, you can do it as a federal employee or you can actually get hired in a contracting company. And these contracting companies, they end up providing solutions and support to a lot of federal agencies, which means a lot of times you'll work side by side with some federal government employees, which could help you eventually become a federal employee yourself. I mainly focus on federal government jobs, but I have friends who are contractors and I sat down with one of them recently. He works for Booz and Allen. Booz and Allen's a company that's headquarters in the DC area. They have about 30,000 employees. And for his role specifically, he is supporting HHS, which is the Health and Human Services. And his contract ends in about two or three months. So he doesn't have that long left on his existing contract. I asked him, how did you get your job? And he told me that the same resume that they taught him in business school at the university he attended, he took that format. It was a two page resume. He applied for the job on Indeed. And then he heard back within a week or two, they did two phone interviews and then they did one in-person interview. He told me that it was supposed to be two, but it ended up only being one in-person interview. And then he got the job. Now, before this job, he worked for another contractor that's around the DC area. So he's never been a federal government employee, but he has worked at three separate contracting companies that support the federal government. All right, so I asked him, what are the pros and cons when it comes to working at Booz and Allen? He said one of the pros is they have this concept called the bench. So you're a contractor and you're doing your, your contract, you're supporting your agency. Once that project is over, there's no need for you, right? So once the contract expires, and most of them are for four or five years, that's the average. Once they expire, they put you on the bench. And the bench is basically an area where you, do, you are not currently involved in any projects, but you can search for your next job. So you're there kind of like on an idle status, on a standby status, and you can be on that bench for about two, three, four months where you're not really working on any projects, but you're applying for different jobs. Now, Booz and Allen also, they will hire talent just to put on the bench. If they realize there's some amazing talent out there, they will give them a job offer and they will just place them on the bench. But these are type of individuals that have high in demand certifications and skills. They know they're valuable and that's why they want them on the roster. Other pros include networking within Booz and Allen. A lot of these type of individuals that work as a contractor, they have connections at other companies and you can leverage those also. They have minority networks. So if you're Hispanic or African American, there are networks that exist within the company that help with the self-development and kind of just strengthen and develop that social connection. It's also, I believe, number 82 or something around there on the top 100 companies to work. Okay, let's go to the cons. The first con is after your contract is over, you go to the bench, but then after that, it's on you to find your next contract or your next job. Otherwise, eventually, you're just going to be terminated and you're not going to be getting any pay or any benefits. So that's one of the things a lot of contractors worry about. Will my contract get renewed? Will I be able to jump on a different contract? Another thing he said is the benefits were not that strong. In fact, he told me, I try not to go to the doctor. That's how he put it. I said, how are your benefits? He's like, well, let's just say I try not to go to the doctor. So that's another, you know, kind of a red flag, depending if that's important to you or not. Another thing is as a contractor, the federal government is the customer. So if you're a contractor and you're working with government employees and they do not like you, they do not like you for whatever reason. Maybe it's the way that your work style, your work ethic, or maybe it's your personality. If they do not like you and it's not a good fit, they can have you removed off that project. And that means you're going on the bench. Okay, so another one is there's no pension. Like in the federal government, we talk about five years guaranteed pension. There's none of that. You have a 401k and there is matching, but no pension. When it comes to pay, a lot of the employees right now, they're getting paid on a monthly basis. So in the federal government, most employees are paid bi-weekly, meaning twice a month. And this could be something that you either like or you do not like. Now this guy is an IT web developer and his supervisor, his current supervisor right now said, 
send me your resume and I will try to get you on another contract. Now, what will happen from this point is if they like him enough, if they, if they feel that he's valuable enough, they will give him an opportunity to interview. They're not guaranteeing him a job. What is try, what's taking place right now is they're trying to get him an interview for another contract. So that can be kind of nerve wracking, especially if you have bills, you have a rent to worry about, you have utilities every month, you have a car payment. And when money is not coming in guaranteed, so to speak, it can make you a little anxious. So I asked him, did you ever consider a federal government job or did you always know you wanted to be a contractor? And he said he considered it in the past, but one of the main reasons he never pursued it is because it's a long process. Where at Booz and Allen, he was hired, I think in two or three weeks, in the federal government, on average, you're looking at four to six months. So not only is it a longer process, it's a more complicated process. And he didn't want to involve himself in going through that long process. Now, he told me that he would consider it in the future. And I believe from what his pay is now, his salary now, he would need to come in at a GS-13. And he would like to work eventually at the IRS. So that's something that's on his radar. I asked him why. Why do you want to be a government employee? The top two reasons were pension and job security. And then I asked him what causes people to get fired or terminated as a contractor. And he said, like we talked about earlier, the personality conflict is a big one. Another reason is we had, they had one person who didn't want to learn a new programming language. He just refused to learn it. So obviously he was kicked off the project. And then there's a couple of other instances where uh, you had people sleeping, <laughs> sleeping, on, sleeping at the desk or sleeping during meetings. And you know, they had to let them go after a few warnings. But what about teleworking? He said that two days a week was what he and others were authorized before the pandemic. Since the pandemic, since 2020, the last three years, he's been 100% remote work. Now, only downside of this, he's on a VPN for Booz and Allen. The only downside of this is he said that the company, they can actually jump on his computer without his consent at any time. You know, a lot of times when you're sharing your screen or your computer, they ask you for consent. Well, in his situation with his company, that's not the case. Now, if you're open to both contracting jobs and becoming a federal employee in the government, you might want to know why most people are leaning towards the federal government side. And the reason is pretty clear. It's the benefits it offers. And if you want to know the top benefits in a federal government job, I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.